Hello, I'm Tina Tower, the founder of Big and Bright School Readiness and Primary Tutoring Centres and the Her Business International Correspondent. And welcome to day three of the South by Southwest Daily Wrap Up. Uh, we are currently standing in the line for the last session of the day, which is Mark Cuban. Um, so we've had to get in the line really early, so you can probably hear some music and some background noise um, and not embarrassing at all to be standing in front of all of these people um, talking about the Daily Wrap Up. But so to give you the upshot of today, so the first session of the day that I went to was an interview by Guy Kawasaki with Robert Cialdini. Um, and Robert Cialdini's been a legend of mine for a very long time. Um, he's best well known for the book Influence, um, which is great and goes through you know, the, the different um, parts of influence that we, ha we have to do in a sales process, things like reciprocation, likability, um, all sorts of things like that. I very much recommend you read the book. Uh, but his new book that he's got out that he was talking about was pre Um So what happens before you go into that sales scenario to set people up for a likelihood of saying yes? Um, and that was really interesting because it looked at things that we're, we're totally unconscious of. I mean, one example that he used was, was a furniture sales place that was trying to sell more furniture and they directed people to a landing page and one of them had clouds in the background and the other had a whole heap of coins in the background of the landing page. And it found that the people that saw clouds in the background were far more likely to buy comfortable furniture and expensive furniture than the people who had coins who were looking at saving money. Um, and the difference was ginormous. I can't remember what the actual percentage was, but it was a huge difference to go, all right, so you're setting people up and then when they asked them whether that had any difference on their buying decisions, of course, everybody said no. Um, so it's all of these sort of unconscious things that we're seeing in our sales setup and things like he used the Royal Caribbean cruise liner example where they were sending out an email with a limited time offer. Um, and they put these little emoticons of ticking clocks in the subject line of the email. And it had a 66% follow through on click rates than if they didn't. So they AB split tested it. Um, so that's a lot of things. I, I recommend you getting the new book. There was a lot of really good takeaways. And at the moment, we'll, we'll have a look at the clip and, and see if you can get some more out of that. He's invoked reciprocation, liking, consistency, authority, social proof, scarcity. What's the morals of this? Can't you, you know, the can't you get people to do something that's against their best interest? You can. It's very important because, as I suggested in that study with the clouds and the coins, people are unaware of the influence. I was unaware. I write books on this, <laughs> and this guy came to my door, you got played. and I was unaware of what he had done until I closed the door and had to think about it in a concentrated way. What just happened there? <laughs> so because we're not aware of this, persuasion, we're always focused on what's happening inside the message. We never think about what is going on before the message. We can be swayed without our recognition of it. So we have to be very ethical in this. Okay, so next after that, I went to a session called Shopping and Sacred Social Space, which was really interesting. It was a, a panel session all about selling online and the most effective ways to reach your customers via social. Uh, and the main reason that I wanted to go there was there were the head marketing managers for both um, eBay and Facebook. Um, and as you'll remember on day one, we, we heard about how many um, people were saying that Facebook marketing is the way to be and it's still the best bang for our buck kind of thing. Um, so, you know, it was a lot around brands having to know where users are spending your time um, and that we need to embrace the sacred space. But the main interesting point for me was where these people actually thought that holes in their businesses were. Um, so they talked a lot about ad blocking software and that a lot of users are using this ad blocking software so that companies like ours cannot get their ads appearing. Um, so, you know, a lot of the platforms, Facebook has 25% of people using it in America now using that ad blocking software, um, which is going to have huge implications for us as advertisers. So Facebook is rewarding advertisers that are enticing more people to not use ad blocking software. So if you're ever using an ad that kind of says, you know, buy now, things that are just blatant advertising, um, they're not going to show your ads and you're going to have to pay way too much to get them shown. Um, so if you're kind of integrating it into look more like a value added piece um, 
and a little bit more like your normal news feed, then you'll get rewarded by these companies because they don't want people to use these ad blocking software. So that was kind of the biggest takeaway I got from that. Um, then I had a little break, so I got to go visit expos today, which was heaps of fun. Um, I went to the Create Expo, which, um, you know, you play with robotics and paper aeroplanes and all this sort of cool stuff that these people are making, um, which just blows my mind because it's so much stuff that you read about or that you don't even know exists that you see. Um, and I went to the main expo as well. So there was one that I absolutely loved, which is all about hydroponic farming, um, which is all shipping containers that they think they can grow enough in there to be equivalent to five acres of land. All of this cool stuff, NASA. Um, the funniest part for me was the Australian stand. They have a whole lot of um, countries. There's probably about 30 or 40 countries um, that all have their own stand to exhibit at South by Southwest. And all of these countries had the most amazing things of all this technology and really cool stuff. And then I walked to the Australian stand and and it's just like the most boring looking stand and no one had anything going on. And I just kind of shook my head and went, come on, Australia. Um, so if you've got something cool next to you, maybe exhibit at South by because we really need to represent that. Um, the next session I wanted to go to was called Conversational UI. Um, and I thought that looked really interesting. I did have to look up what UI meant um, and it was user interface. So, you know, that was all around how to create the user interface um, that's going to work the best for your website. Um, but unfortunately, I wasn't the only one that thought that. Um, so I didn't get in. It was the first one that I, I didn't get in because it was all full. And then the last one I'll talk about is Casey Neistat. So he was my absolute favorite. Um, it was one going in that, I only wanted to go in there because I wanted to see the session after and I wanted to get a seat, so I wasn't even that interested in going, um, but it was absolutely fantastic. Now this guy walked out on the stage um, looking like he just got out of bed. He had tracksuit pants on, um, he had sunglasses on his head and I was going, oh my god, have a little bit of respect man. Um, but I can totally see why, he was absolutely fantastic, he was a YouTube star, a filmmaker, all of this stuff. Um, I, I recommend looking up the Nike ad make it count um, and his latest one which is a Samsung ad. If you just type in in YouTube, do what you can't, um, you'll see his sort of style and what he does. And you know, after doing that, I was inspired and going, oh my gosh, we should be making so much more video. And it's not polished, um, which was the best thing because I think too much, there's too many barriers in the way thinking that we have to have all of this awesome equipment and all of these editing skills and it really wasn't. I mean, there's a certain degree in there, um, but what he's been able to promote and the advertising he's been able to do and make it hilarious is really great. Um, and that's, <laughs> that's the end of our wrap up because our line is moving. See you tomorrow.